The Camogie Association would like to welcome members of the GEA Youth Rep Committee who are going to present results from the GEA Youth Forum 2019. We would also like to welcome Dermot Cahill as Chairperson of the National Youth Consultation Committee and Anya McParland as Chairperson of the GEA Youth Rep Committee. We would like to thank Christina Bradshaw, Tommy Carroll, Paul Fahey and Emma Myler for taking the time to provide us with an insight into our Young Adult Gaelic Games members. Hi, my name is Christina, I'm from Carlo and I am one of the GA Youth Representatives. Today, Tommy, Paul, Emma and myself are going to talk you through the activities from 2019. The GA Youth Forum is consultation and congress in, in addition to our recommendations going forward. In 2019, we recruited youth reps via social media and subsequently ended up with 30 youth reps for 2019. We spoke at the 2019 National Coaching Conference and stressed the need for coaches to create a positive culture for our young people, ensuring that they feel respected and encouraged to develop and grow. As the 2018 Youth Congress highlighted that 67% of the delegates experienced verbal, verbal abuse from their coaches. We also made a presentation to the GA Communications Committee and we have established a positive working relationship with the National Youth Consultation Committee, with both groups working together to deliver the 2019 Youth Forum and supporting each other on tasks such as the development and communication of a youth-friendly code of behaviour, which we designed in gui with guidance from the Child Safeguarding Section in Crow Park. In an effort to recognise the efforts of young volunteers, we encourage young and encourage youth volunteering um, we conduct a review of the existing youth volunteer awards before preparing proposals which will be further revised and discussed with the committee in the hope of finalising them in early 2020. We have prepared a proposal which would see us establish an online digital repository, which we feel will form a vital part of how the associations communicate with young people, while also ensuring that young people have their voice heard. The 2019 Youth Forum was held on the 26th of October with over 400 young players aged between 12 and 21 attending. Um, it was a fun-filled and educational day, including workshops on rules and respect with David Goss, gym to pitch with John Murphy, managing transition with Keith Higgins and Kira Trant, in addition to gaining insights with a Q&A with top players Podge Collins and Martina McMahon. The purpose of the Youth Forum is to give members a voice, to let them say what they think is right in a safe environment without judgment and being listened to both on the day and through us as youth reps. I will now hand you over to Tommy to talk through the consultation. Thank you, Christina. My name is Tommy and I'm from County Cork. The consultation workshop involved 150 young people aged either 14 or 15 and focused on drop-off where the aim was to establish the vectors that would lead a young person to stop playing Gaelic games and to identify practical recommendations that a teammate, coach or club could adopt to discourage young people from dropping out of Gaelic games. We conducted an exercise using post-it notes asking why a young player might walk away from playing Gaelic games. All the data can be accessed online in our written report. But, as you can see, there is more than one factor that would cause young players to drop off. The most common reasons include lack of access, loss of confidence, lack of time and lack of fun. Young people also acknowledged that there are other reasons such as time doesn't suit, no lift, overly competitive, priorities change, life happens, losing too much and not getting anywhere. Dividing the delegates based on the code they played, the top three reasons for each code can be seen. But it is interesting to see that the loss of interest and enjoyment is a common theme as well as not getting game time. What is also interesting is the external influences that are different to each code. For example, not getting game time and the influence of friends are key influences in Komogi compared to the poor relationships experienced with hurling managers. The attraction of substance abuse with football and time management in ladies football 
understanding these differences is vital, especially if we want to tackle drop off across each code, as one method may not work for all. The second exercise involved a discussion on what recommendations the delegates suggest teammates, coaches and clubs can do to prevent players quitting. The first area we looked at was what young players can do to keep their teammates playing. The standout from the consultation was the simplicity of the comments, offering support, checking if those at risk are okay and helping improve their skills were all factors that the delegates felt would help keep youngsters involved. The empathy displayed gives great hope for the future of the association. It's a stark reminder that in an era of large teenage drop-off in sport, that we should not overlook the basics of inclusivity and positive feedback. Following on from teammates, we asked what coaches can do to prevent young players from dropping off. First and foremost, increased game time was seen as paramount. While this may seem obvious, it was interesting to hear that the delegates, all of whom are still playing, felt that coaches should emphasise game time for all ahead of winning. Perhaps the most striking ask of the delegates was that coaches should talk more to their players. Giving positive and constructive feedback was considered key, as well as talking to players about their skill development. And finally, we asked what clubs can do to keep their young players involved. Equality came to the fore. Equal opportunities emerged on several fronts with a strong focus on differentiating between male and female teams within a club. The main team to emerge was that of being engaged by the club. Many felt the club should actively engage those who have quit or are thinking about quitting and listen to why they feel they need to quit. This could help the club address any issues and implement change to assist players in continuing within the club. I will now hand you over to Paul to talk through our Youth Congress. Thank you, Tommy. My name is Paul and I play with Athena Ryan Gola. Given the success of the 2018 Youth Congress, we agreed to host yet another Youth Congress as part of the forum. The Youth Congress involved 120 young people, of which 63% were females. Breaking the statistics down further, 12% of the delegates played Komogi, and a further 20% were dual players playing both football and Komogi. The Youth Congress was chaired by German Cal and attended by John Horn, Kathleen Woods, and Marie Hickey. The presence of all of the three presidents is vital in terms of the credibility and integrity of the Youth Congress and confirms to our young people that they are valued members of the association. The purpose of the Youth Congress is to allow for discussion and voting on topical items within Gaelic Games and consequently to gather the feedback and relay it on to decision makers. The Youth Press proposed the questions for discussion with additional items coming from the committee. Looked around Cumulus Class Scale and LGFA and Code Commerce. Those questions filter down to three teams games, programs, communication, substance abuse. In relation to games programs, many delegates were in favour of the interchange system and rolling substitutes for ages up to under 17, with 59% in support. Those in favour suggested that it would result in increased game time, reduced drop off, everyone gets a chance. Those not in sport felt that smaller clubs would be disadvantages as they have less players available. When asked if the rules of Komogi and LJFA be amended to allow for more contact, 97% of delegates were in sport. Those in favour suggested that it would increase that increased contact would make the game more exciting. Although some people said no due to the risk of injury, it might not be fair on smaller slash younger girls who are playing. At, up at adult level. Also, when asked if delegates had ever done a gym program, 79% of delegates said that they had done one, and 81% felt that their gym program benefited their playing game. Delegates felt that the gym programs improved their fitness and that the winter training keeps them together as a team. Others also felt that it improved their flexibility and strength and needs to be done in this day and age. Moving on to communication, the current way in which clubs and, and the association gathers the views of its members is through the club AGM. However, only 27% of delegates attended their club AGM 
which would imply that the other 70% aren't sharing their views. Even more worrying though is that only 32% knew that over 16 under, over 16s are entitled to attend their club AGM. Our young people need to know that they belong in the, to their club and to put, and that both them and their opinions are valued. To belong means having a voice, but we need to tell our young people where they can go and they'll be listened to. In relation to substance abuse, there is a stark difference between the perception of drinking, of the perception of a drinking culture compared to that of a drug use among the players. 80% of delegates feel that there is a culture of drinking too much alcohol with many citing peer pressure, expectation, influenced by older players as reasons to why it exists. On the other hand, many felt that being involved in some association kept, keeps players away from drugs and they aren't accepted, which is why only 25% think that drug use is an issue among other players. The results show that alcohol is a bigger problem. These findings are significant and should be made aware to those coaching our young people. But we should also be looking for our older players to set an example as the age gaps in the teams have, can have an impact. I will now pass you over to Emma to talk through our recommendations. Thank you, Paul. My name is Emma and I'm from Dublin. Based on the findings from the consultation and Youth Congress, we've prepared recommendations around three areas. Firstly, focusing on improved communication. We asked on Quistabanish Dig, the Kumalu Class Gael, to circulate our report to every county for consideration so that the views of young people are communicated to the decision makers at club and county level. And we asked that the Camogie Association do the same, as we feel there is valuable information in our report and that county delegates should be aware of the views of our young people. To support us in a request to present our findings to those central committees we feel are most relevant and will benefit from the facts, figures and young people's opinions contained in it. We will be meeting with the GAA central committees and if you would like to meet with us at county or national level, we are very happy to accept the invite. We also ask that a number of youth reps be given the opportunity to attend GAA Congress for the totality. Last month, we had five youth reps attend GAA Congress, and we also had a motion passed that ensures that young people will continue to attend GAA Congress and have speaking rights, highlighting our engagement with the decision makers in the GAA, which we hope will continue to flourish and grow in the future across all associations. Our second recommendation focuses on improved consultations. We're very eager to deliver roadshows. The findings from the Youth Forum show that our young people aren't aware that they can attend their club AGM. Therefore, we want to work with counties and provinces to deliver roadshows to educate and empower our young people and give them a say on matters of importance to them. In addition, we want to develop online depositories to enable young people who are involved in Gaelic games to have their say in relation to matters of strategic importance in a manner that is age appropriate, voluntary, safe and peer reviewed. The online repository will provide decision makers with the opportunity to work in conjunction with the youth reps to consult and engage with young people so that they can more readily factor young people's views and opinions into their decision making processes. This project is currently in review and we hope will come into fruition this year and form part of our work for 2020. Recommendation, recommendation three concentrates on improved engagement. In 2019, we conducted a review of existing volunteer youth awards and prepared proposals for Grodden and Oak, which we look forward to finalising in 2020. We also wish to identify that clubs and counties, the, sorry, the steps that clubs and counties can take to raise awareness of volunteer opportunities amongst young members. We're excited by these proposals and through these initiatives, we hope to bring, to highlight the many different ways in which a young per person can be involved and contribute to the, to the associations. We would like to see young people included and involved in both the planning and delivery of the strategic goals and objectives that are set out in the three, five and 10 year strategic plans. We are extending an invite to assist in the incorporation of a youth element into any consultations that Camogie Association undertake in the future. Our next step is youth reps includes working with youth committees to build a sustainable model and structure 
that will work for the group in the future that will meet the needs of both the young people and the associations. Unique to our group is the opportunity to work with all three associations and we look forward to engaging with the Camogie Association at their conferences and providing them with the feedback that we gathered from the Youth Forum so that, so that the, the decision makers across all associations are aware of the opinions of their young members. Further, we look forward to meeting with those central committees we feel are most relevant and will benefit from the fact figures and young people's opinions gathered at the 2019 Youth Forum. I'd like to thank Kathleen and Sinead, Aideen, James and Alan for their support over the last year and for the invite to present our report to you this evening. We look forward to working closely with them again this year as we continue to educate, empower and engage with young people whilst fulfilling our purpose as youth rep to act, speak and listen to, for and on behalf of young people. Firma Agil Galer, Osprey Guijana.